What I'm actually going to present today is about uh, addressing actually the main theme of the conference, which was about you know the working across um, differences, um, uh, probably a little bit more more directly than maybe other presentations we had in these two days um, event. Um, uh, but um, I'm sure a, a lot of um, work happens across different projects. Um, the, a lot of um, alliances um, are built. Um, um, the more um, we study, or I have been studying, the more I have become excited to see that these connections are actually growing in, the, in many different forms, networks, uh, especially um, across different places, different projects. Um, uh, but uh, still, I'm not sure that I'm really satisfied with what is actually happening because when you look at these um, projects um, individually, case by case, you see that these practitioners, activists, um, uh, and even um, uh, many of the, um, of the academics or researchers that are also involved um, in such projects or study such projects that are so engaged in, in these projects that they uh, lose that holistic view uh, that uh, um, that can actually potentially help them to see the possibilities for um, making more sustainable connections and um, and and prob probably the possibility of working towards something uh, something bigger, uh, what I may call a grand uh, project of transformation or or grand projects of um, of transformation or transforming society. Um, it's amazing to see such diversity, but I think many of um, these projects um, or practitioners, um, as we could also see um, from um, a number of um, presentations we had, they face the dilemma of how we can actually, as, as, um, as Sarah said, maintain the multiplicity and uh, still uh, uh, get more unified and more, uh, grow more solidarity. And that's, I think, um, it's, um, it's um, something that um, many movements may, may from, from all ages um, have, um, have always been uh, struggling with. Um, and um, I should say that um, this has been um, the, uh, ma my major concern, um, espe especially in the last um, 10 to 12 years since I uh, completed my PhD. And the reason that I became very interested in this and I started to believe that such thing can happen, um, that integration, um, uh, towards um, implementing, developing and implementing um, grand projects. Uh, uh, the reason was that what I discovered, I guess, in, in, in my research, my PhD research, uh, which was about the global justice movement um, um, since the Seattle event um, until 2006, when I covered those, uh, a number of um, uh, good cases, and that came as a, as a book, Alternative uh, Globalizations. Um, I saw a really great potential in these movements and I tried to capture that potential or capacity uh, which was mostly partly cognitive and partly practical and I tried to capture it by terms like accommodative um, uh, you know, consciousness um, uh, and then later um, um, I replaced that with you know, the idea of transversality and again later with um, Ariel um, James and Barry Gills, uh, we thought that, we, that transversality uh, is probably can be considered as a, a, as a, a, kind, of a, mo a kind of a cosmopolitanism. Mm -hmm. um, that, I know that cosmopolitanism is um, it's a very problematic term, but we try to actually um, uh, differentiate between what we call transversalism or transversal cosmo cosmopolitanism with the Eurocentric cosmopolitanism um, in, in, in a number of, uh, of uh, publications. Um, now, um, I have uh, started to move a little bit away from that. Um, um, I see some limitations in that kind of um, framing. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking that maybe as a, uh, as a new framework, um, the common, uh, commoning or the, the commons paradigm uh, perhaps can um, can help us uh, in in terms of dealing with um, 
the preservation of um, diversity and the, 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 di the dilemma of the presentation of diversity and, and uh, creation of solidarity. Um, I don't think anyone here needs to be reminded that um, alternatives, um, or what we call alternatives vaguely maybe, are fast pro uh, proliferating in numerous places in, in many ways and forms, especially since the GFC happened. Um, and, um, but um, they're, not, they're very much vi invisible, especially to the public's eyes, and they're not really making headlines, of course, um, especially um, with respect to the mainstream corporate media. And if, uh, if they do, uh, perhaps this would raise some doubts um, uh, about you know, their legitimacy uh, to be entitled as alternative if really they, they make um, headlines in mainstream media. Um, so that's um, when I was thinking of this, that you know, why they are invisible I mean, uh, to the public except those who are uh, practically involved or study them. Uh, then I thought that w probably we need to stop here and think a little bit about what we really mean by alternative, and especially when we talk about post-capitalist or post-capital or post-carbon. Um, and that, um, that, I think, um, that is something that probably needs a little bit of a reflection. Um, and, and I should, again, um, um, probably many of us are familiar with many of these alternatives and uh, websites are growing, new publications are coming. Actually, they're not that new, but I'm sure you know more than, be, uh, more than me, uh, uh, more of those new publications. But even people are now writing dictionaries of alternatives, encyclopedias of alternatives, and, uh, and, and handbooks on alternatives. And you could, you could see actually one of the, the concept of the, of, the, of the handbook we're writing, a number of us uh, editing. Uh, in your folder, uh, something that we can probably discuss later today. Um, and uh, uh, you can also think, um, um, you can have a look and think of how you, can, who, how, how you might, you know, uh, like to, to, to contribute to that. Um, but um, yeah, uh, a bit of a reflection on the issue of al alter uh, alternative or alterity. You know, alterity, just to um, look at the Merriam-Webster's dictionary, alterity means otherness, alternative represents alterity, being different from usual, especially when you have a choice between two options. Uh, and the word uh, or, or the prefix like post means later, after. And uh, poster posteriority means subsequent or later. So um, in themselves or by themselves, they don't really mean, they don't necessarily mean something radically different. Um, so that, is, uh, that makes them very subjective. I mean, what we really mean by, you know, what, what, what extent of difference is it can be considered as as an alterity, uh, as something that can, we can call it alternative. How much difference that should show compared to the, could, compared to the norm, compared to the usual. Uh, and also with the, the, with the, the term post, I mean, the, again, that doesn't ne necessarily mean that, you know, what, what comes later is going to be massively and significantly different. Um, if uh, we are indeed interested in something significantly different. So it's, it's extremely subjective um, uh, kind of term, post-capital alternative or alterity, uh, because, um, and, and it will be very dependent. So it, that's maybe something good, because then we can uh, be as inclusive as possible. Um, so we can talk about a spectrums um, um, of, of that starts from one side, the moderate ones, to the very radical ones. Um, but one of the um, uh, sentences or slogans or mottos um, uh, uh, attributed to, to Che Guevara, uh, be, which was actually one of the slogans, I, I guess, of the, uh, of the student movement in the 1960s, is be realistic, demand the impossible. I think that's one of the very, <laughs> very um, profound uh, ways of saying uh, uh, something really good. What we, I mean, that tells me that what we really sometimes normally think as realistic 
um, or feasible can actually be delusional um, or, or even uh, more delusional than what we think as utopian. Sometimes I can see that when the, we have conversations across different alternatives, people accuse each other, you know, you're too utopian, you're too optimistic, and mine is more realistic. Well, what, uh, what was some, I mean, sometimes in, in, in some historical stages, we see that the possible is no longer actually acceptable. And that actually pushes us to think about something that we used to think was not actually um, realistic. And then here you can see the, the, the boundaries between what we think as realistic and utopian actually gets very, very um, confused. Um, so, and at the same time, especially these days, I can see that well, now we see that there are very valid and strong arguments that we're pretty running out of time, if, um, and, and this ca capitalism really needs to be replaced with something more profoundly different, otherwise we face um, you know, uh, serious issues. I mean, if we had maybe, I mean, I think capitalism had a pretty um, good amount of time to replace feudalism, but now, uh, considering the, 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 uh, the, the crises and the catastrophes that are looming, I don't think that post-capitalist um, uh, future uh, has that much of time to grow unless we do something more, um, more seriously uh, in terms of um, uh, actually uh, uh, creating integration, greater solidarity, um, among the existing endeavors and the, and the, the future endeavors in, in order to build something uh, more, uh, more um, I would say, mega or macro. Um, um, so again, that's, that's again the, that raises again the dilemma of diversity versus uh, homogeneity or, or solidarity and the idea of transversality that we, we try to develop in order to address this dilemma. Um, sorry. Um, address this dilemma before. Uh, now, uh, they, 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 the universe of alternatives is growing fast, and that's good news. Um, but, um, and so and that's, uh, what I'm presenting here is actually is not a particular alternative, so I'm trying to, um, it's rather a kind of an investigative action-oriented framework with a strong commitment to help progressive post-capital endeavors to traverse across their defining or dividing boundaries qualities and overcome the barriers that prevent them from learning from and collaborating with one another. I call this the, uh, the communist project, like we, when we say the modern project, but I don't, mean, I don't mean a kind of a universal project at all. It will be communist projects uh, from my point of view, and it's of course very suggestive. Um, so since it is inspired by the commons theory or paradigm and aims to generate uh, common platforms by exploring and exposing common denominators or grounds around which alternatives can work together to transcend constraints of living under, um, under the rule of capital and contribute to, the, to a grand inclusive transition to a post-capitalist future. Therefore, communism is not an ideology or a utopia, but rather an intellectual activist way of helping the competing progressive um, uh, ideologies and utopian visions fulfill their dreams more effectively together by creating workable solidarities and joint initiatives. This is not only possible, but rather urgently necessary, at least from my point of view, but it may not happen um, of its own accord, and that's the bad news. Um, now, um, yes, in this uh, expanding universe, or you may call it multiverse of alternatives, um, there are actually, so I'm not just dreaming here, there are other people doing the same thing, um, pretty the same thing maybe. Uh, there are ambitious projects like this. You, you, many of you, I guess, um, are familiar with the Next System Project website, and you've seen many of those alternatives being uh, presented and represented there. Uh, which, which uh, provides people with a good source of information about different things that are happening. There are a series of books um, um, that have uh, been published um, uh, more recently. Uh, they call Integral Economics or Integral Communities Projects, and uh, you might have seen some of them. 
um, already. Uh, they're very interesting uh, works. Um, they, 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 the integral economics compared to the next system project gets a little bit deeper into the foundations of alternatives and tries to bring m uh, to, to, to actually make the scope m much wider than the Western uh, civilization uh, scope um, um, uh, or base. Um, but um, Unlike these projects, I think communism is not just about simply bringing alternatives together in a common pool of shared knowledge that can be managed like the commons or, uh, or, or the knowledge commons. It rather um, uh, moves beyond these generating no uh, knowledge commons by translating the, the, the generated common knowledges or languages into a macro societal project of transforming society in its entirety. Uh, bringing into and bringing this into more con to, to consciousness of those who are practically involved and and a lot of translation actually needs to happen because when you look at these ma many of such projects alternatives ideologies they use different languages but by, by, by any of those terms they mean almost the same thing uh, and this is something that I have um, tried to map and find what are those similarities commonalities in language um, well, I can't really, I don't have time to get into the details of this project, Internal Economics um, um, and the book, but, um, uh, um, well, that didn't really satisfy me. They, they've got kind of an imagined uh, model and they use geographical directions and, and they've got a pretty good um, um, uh, range of alternatives from uh, what they call north, west, east, south. Um, and they, they try to bring all the goodies um, of each one of these um, approaches together and see what they can actually uh, make uh, uh, out of this uh, uh, messy thing. And it's interesting that even if some of these authors are not Western originally, but the, uh, the, the concept that they are using, East versus West, North and South, is very uh, I think it's, it, it, I mean, Mark, the way I understand it, it's still very colonialist, that as if, you know, East is, East is about becoming reflective and consciousness, West is more about, you know, uh, pragmatism, you know, the South is more about the community, whereas North is more about, you know, institution building, you know. Uh, but in, I invite you to read that book. It's, it's a very interesting one, I guess, because it tries to get a little bit more profound than other ones. Um, so, um, uh, the f so the so these um, the, the diversity and the and the reason that we we probably uh, we have many obstacles in front of us to create in to 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 create more integration is that is that these the projects alternatives are not just different um, in terms of their goals or their strategies the differences are are in somehow uh, multi layered so. I've tried to do something a little bit more than what um, Eric Olin Wright has done. Uh, I think we can have um, categorized them, roughly speaking, with acknowledging that there are overlaps between these categories into these um, into these you know groups. You know, you know some of them are in institutional um, collective practices or communal experiences. They find they try to find some niches within the within the structure of the dominant system, like community ownership of means of energy production, community microfinance. They are more kind of practice oriented and more communal and less probably uh, organizational or institutional in a formal sense. Uh, the second one are the, the disturbing collective um, actions and movements such as an, uh, anti-austerity movements so that not only protest the status quo uh, and raise public awareness about the root causes of social crisis but also exercise their ideological values through collective actions like anti-austerity movements, Arab Spring and Occupy movements and all sorts of prefigurative movements and by prefigurative I mean that you know you be the change you want to see in the world you know you you practice what you want to achieve within your movement uh, which is in somehow more about resistance and 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 disrupting 
Uh, the third would be transitional policy reforms that are designed to address crisis, but if not seen as ends in themselves, potentially can empower the disempowered forces of progressive change. Examples are progressive taxation schemes such as ta Tobin tax, um, wealth tax, universal basic income or services, job guarantee or full employment, new green deal, and etc., etc. Uh, the fourth would be self-contained modular institutions or organizations like worker-owned cooperatives, time banks, um, credit unions, and so on and so forth. The list is very long. Uh, the fifth would be sectoral policy reforms or trans uh, to transform sectors of society, not the whole, such as housing, agriculture, banking, um, corporate enterprise, energy, waste management, urban or rural <coughs> development in their totality. Examples like ecological agriculture, B, B Corps that we um, had, a, had a presentation on that yesterday. And the sixth would be normative uh, critical theories of transition and utopian ideologies such as ecofeminism, um, eco-socialism. So as you can see, the diversity is, is very, very multi-layered. Some, some of them are very well grounded on theories, some of them are very practice oriented, um, some of them are uh, communal, some of them organizational, some of them require the involvement of the state and or, uh, the reformation of the policies and so on and so forth. Um, but you know, just to give you a glimpse of why we need to create integration, why we just, just don't leave them to grow, you know, by themselves, and maybe they find each other and create, you know, uh, clusters. I mean, that, f for instance, just to give you some idea, you know, the four spheres of the communal, the civil society, state, and the market are interdependent, and therefore any reform within each of these spheres require reforms in the other two or three. Uh, all, figures, all, all together, such a cross-sphere transformation requires new ways of structuring politics, economy, and socio-ecological relations at all levels from the local to the global. And I think that you know, the issue of what role the state can play was raised a number of times yesterday um, as, as one of the dilemmas. Uh, it is almost impossible for the self-reliant communal projects to transcend beyond their institu in interstitial relations with capital if the state, the international regimes of governance and economic regulation are left um, uh, inveterate as the conditioning environment. On the other hand, any meaningful structural reform in this state and market towards the realization of a post-capital future will not be possible without active participation of communities with some degree of self-rule and self-reliance. Communism, therefore, is a project to create commoning spaces where integral models of transforming the state, the community, civil society, and economy um, are developed and strategies to implement these models are defined. Now, um, many of these alliances that normally happen and give us you know, um, optimism, a sense of optimism, they are normally at the level of strategies, tactics, and processes, and many of them are very pragmatic. But uh, if we look at the way that uh, strategies are developed, they're rooted in transformative theory the movement has, then, then transformative theory is rooted into normative theory, what the movement wants to re realize or idealize, and that normative theory is rooted into the underpinning uh, worldview. Uh, this might be a little bit more kind of, um, 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 I would say, theoretical um, um, a structuring of the way that this, this, these elements are related, but uh, by, by and large, this is what normally happens. And the more concrete and the more practical the project is, uh, the, these elements, finding these elements in that alternative will become more implicit, more, more, uh, more difficult. But it's still a job of people like us, the, the so-called academics that are also involved in transformative um, uh, research. So and then, the, then I think by addressing these layers, we can then uh, examine the the, reconcil the reconciliability of, of of these movements. I would w focus uh, if I have time a little bit. How much I don't have? Uh, okay, you, I would focus a little bit more on the normative theory, and then by normative theory I mean what are the ideal ways of being and living, willing and enabling, learning and liaising, becoming and and creating. Uh, what do I mean by this? Okay, 
I think that when, and again, this is the, the, the method is, you know, kind of an interplay between inductive research and deductive research, that you look and see what, uh, what are the things that these, uh, these movements normally idealize or, or imagine, um, um, envision future, and uh, in, uh, if in what elements uh, you can find in them. So one element would be the mode of being and living that determines how societies, communities should meet the essential requirements of living well for their members, non-human living beings in their environmental settings and their future generations. Fundamental to this is the way the relationships between, between human beings as both individual and collective beings um, and their ecological networks, natural resources, and their means of living, both productive and reproductive, of course, um, are set up and how reproduction and redistribution, recycling waste, consumption, exchange, and financing are systematized. Uh, second mode uh, is the mode of uh, willing um, and enabling. It, uh, their approach to willing and enabling determines how societies, communities should make decisions, plan and execute plans, participate, evaluate, manage internal conflicts of interest, structure power relations within and between their communities, and face outside challenges. Third would be mode of learning and liaising that determines the ideal ways through which individuals, collectives, institutions, and natural environment create and preserve solidarity and diversity, recognize differences, form common identities, include, exclude, privilege, discriminate, and do other or othering. Um, mode of becoming uh, and creating determines how societies and their individuals should evolve out of and move beyond the prevailing socio-ecological structures and their established belief or cultural settings and how they should uh, mobilize resources, motivate social actors, overcome structural impediments, and manage crises. Um, now, I have a list of, you know, uh, how in terms of each of these issues, being and living, willing and enabling, and so on and so forth, we are actually facing a tragedy. I would, I, I think I better to skip that because everybody knows how, how tragic the situation is. Uh, no need of reminding us of that. Uh, but how we can actually, um, uh, what would be the process? I know the, the, the communist um, inquiry. Um, I think that we, it, it can start from commoning, and that can, it can start from critical case studies to generate a knowledge commons of the alternatives. Then we can actually map them to explore potential commonalities and dissimilarities. And then the next stage, uh, would that would make it a little bit different to the other projects, integrative projects I, I, I talked about before, uh, is that the communist integration it needs to be actually planned um, through action research with the purpose of transcending capitalist relations or helping these movements to transcend capital relations, to liberate themselves from the impediments of capitalism and, to, and, and also to help society to, to be transformed. <clears throat> now, so it uh, starts with commoning alternatives, knowledge production, um, uh, commoning the knowledge and then translating that knowledge to integrative projects practices and policies. Uh, so the aims would be to make the strengths and weaknesses of alternatives more evident to those movements uh, in question, the en to end the delusion of one fits all, to bring alternatives into creative dialogues and mutual recognition based on their shared core values and to help them understand each one's vocabulary, to promote mutual recognition, and then finally a mutual aid provision is another aspect of commoning of the alternatives. It ranges from seeking outsiders' advice on a given vision's contradictions and short-sightednesses that can help promote critical self-reflection self among supporters of the vision to exploring common grants for collaboration to creating spaces of symbiotic coexistence and co-creation to, to, to coalescing for, for, uh, for political change. Now again, these four dimensions that I talked about before, and then um, certainly we want to preserve diversity rather than creating another hegemony. Um, and it's uh, one way to overcome this perhaps is just to, again, through those mapping and, and critical investigations and critical reflections, we can actually find what are the commonest core, the most, the most common, 
among the, the alternatives that we select um, for our project, for the communist project. And then, of course, these are multi different layers. You've got the very core that is the most common, and uh, is this up soon? Okay, how soon? <laughs> okay, uh, and then the, another layer would be potentially adjustable to, to compromise, and, and then another layer are the inflexible aspects of that, those movements that they need to be recognized as their differences. But this making these more, um, um, you know, making these movements more aware of such commonalities and differences is the main issue. Um, okay, now I have uh, started reading an, a, a number of the, those alternatives that are presented in the Next System Project website. And I, again, in terms of these four modalities, and I can see that, you know, in terms of being and living, one of the most common things is the self-sustaining modes of living and, uh, and, and being. In terms of willing and enabling, it's again the emphasis that is very common among them in terms of stressing on participatory modes of governance and planning. And then the third one, learning and in terms of learning and liaising, I can see the transversal modes of sociality. And then um, in terms of becoming and being, uh, sorry, begetting or, or creating is about, you know, you know, transformative modes of praxis that are very much uh, uh, well integrated and embedded into uh, almost all uh, of the projects I have studied so far. Um, so th the method last is to come uh, to, to come in our knowledge of the of, of various alternative uh, ventures. We need to start with examining their capacities with respect to each one of four components of envisioning future. Out of such systemic examinations, integrative fr frameworks can be developed. Uh, just very briefly again, if if I have a minute, maybe. Uh, or two. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm very much pri <laughs> privileged here. Uh, okay, <laughs> uh, that would be very anti-communist. <laughs> so just, just maybe just this. You know, communism is an eco-civilizational project that can help create common platforms for collaborative and and the rest. Um, and then, yeah, I think that 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 in somehow tries to wrap things up at the end. Um, yep, okay. Thanks, Anna. Thank you, thanks for patience. Uh, so I think